Hello there, everybody. It is Duff Designs. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing something that I feel like is very needed for the uh, community, for a lot of designers. This is one of the more difficult parts of designing in this game. Uh, and I'm sure you can tell by the title, it is Bunker Sculpting. Uh, a lot of people in this game, a lot of newer designers especially I've seen, have issues with trying to get their bunkers flat, their bunkers having smooth edges, and stuff similar to that. Bunkers can be very frustrating, especially if you don't know all the ins and outs of bunkers. Uh, there's a lot of weird things with these. I don't know why they are the way that they are, but they are. Now I'm going to show you some of the ins and outs. Uh, real quick, I just want to show you why I feel like I'm qualified to talk about bunkers, and this is my uh, my fantasy course I just finished up not too long ago, which has just over a thousand five hundred or a thousand fifty bunkers on the course. Uh, now keep in mind, not every one of these bunkers is sculpted to perfection. I didn't spend a lot of time on bunkers that were away from play, but in terms of bunkers on play, uh, I spent a lot of time actually sculpting them, making them look right. Uh, especially ones like these. These are just beautiful looking bunkers, visual bunkers. Uh, so yeah, I feel like uh, I'm qualified enough to talk about it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get on to it. Uh, I've already picked out a little plot right here that I'm going to be placing down some bunkers. So uh, first things first is I'm just going to slap down a basic green and fairway. Nothing special. I'm going to slap down a about 100 square foot green, or 100 or green, pretty big, and let's just say this is a par 3 right here. I'm going to run this up to there, have it run smooth, got this, and say this is our little layout for our hole right here. I'm going to come in here, and for me, uh, there are two ways you can do bunkers. You can sculpt the hole first, so I can come in here. I can do all of the flattening in here, get the stuff moved away, kind of flatten it put it around, get this down over here. Just gonna use that flatten tool to get my whole kind of basic laid out. And then I'd pick my bunker location and I'd come over here and maybe do something like this. I would start flattening the area. A lot of people actually like to use tools like this. Uh, come in here, flatten it out. And this type of bunker gives you a perfect flat bottom with a uh, raised edge when you do it like this. So I've got a whole little area right here. And I would come in here to my bunker spline tool and make the shape a little smaller. And just kind of run it along here. And that right there, this is the easiest way you're going to be able to get flat bunkers and easy good bunker shapes is by having the area already flattened and already laid out before you put your bunker down once you put your bunker down it gets a whole hell of a lot harder to actually be able to flatten this stuff out and work with it so let me come in here let's go to the race tool i'm just gonna put a big slope right there and say I'm a, I'm a newer designer, and I'm trying to figure out how the hell am I going to fix this slope in here. Uh, what a lot of designers will do is they'll just grab their flatten tool and they'll just start clicking away in here. Start flattening stuff. And what happens here is you don't notice it at first, but this bunker is a whole bunch deeper than the original bunker that we place. So if I go ahead and undo, 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 you can see that that bunker actually dropped down probably about to here, probably dropped down two feet off of that. And there's a reason for this. Uh, if I come over here, I grab my bunker, and I'm just gonna demonstrate it right here. Go ahead and get my little shape. So when you do a spline, a spline does not really create that deep of a bunker compared to if you come in here and you grab your bunker and you grab your brush. This bunker goes down a lot more. 
goes down a lot deeper and it gives you this little edge on here when you use these uh splines or these uh brushes so uh one the big thing that people don't know is when you come in here and you're using your flatten tool all right so we got the middle of our bunker right here and i'm gonna set up a little control point right here and if we come down to the center down here you can see that it is three feet down right there and now you may be thinking, all right, three feet. I want my whole bunker to be three feet deep now. So I'm going to come in here, rotate my little flatten tool, get it to where I want it. Use the other flatten tool, actually, just gives a little better shape. And I'm going to try to flatten that whole bunker based off of that point right there. Go ahead and flatten. And as you can see, what, what just happened? My bunker just dropped down a whole bunch. Let me go back to my measure tool and show you the difference right there. That dropped it down a whole foot. An entire foot is what the flatten tool dropped down, but it told you it was not going to do that. So what ends up happening is people get to this point right here where they have their flat bunker. They think they can just come in here with the flatten tool and just click, 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 click to flatten the whole thing. But that ends up creating a huge hole in, in the ground. There are two ways to get around this. You can either still use your flatten tool, but you have to keep in mind that, okay, I need to bring this up to a foot. I need to have this raised at a foot. So I'm going to come here to the front of the bunker, raise a foot, come here to the back of the bunker, raise a foot. And what this does is it keeps your bunker flat uh, while keeping that same elevation without deepening your bunkers. So if I come up here, this should be relatively close. Yeah, I felt like I... I had it a little off usually like a foot one inch foot two inch is usually better uh but as you can see that is nowhere near as deep as it was it was uh extra extra half a foot deep right there and the other way you can do it which i don't typically do as often because the raise tool can be very difficult to use sometimes it's just using your raise tool uh, so i come in here and i just raise this whole bunker up Try to make sure I'm not raising the edges and just raise the center. As you can see, you can still do some nice work with the raise tool. It's just you may be affecting areas outside of your intended area. And even if you do make it smaller, what happens with your raise tool is you can get some kind of uneven slopes in here. It's kind of hard to tell, but the slopes aren't, it isn't a smooth slope. There's kind of like a little raise here and a little raise here, and it kind of lowers down to here. So that's the one disadvantage to your raise tool. And then the more raises you add onto there, the more slopes you have, the more inconsistencies you have in there. So now I've got a mount here, mount here, mount in the center. It's just all over the place. So your bunkers, you have to spend a lot of time with your bunkers and making sure that the bottoms are flat if you're going to do edges they need to be uh kind of kind of more raised edges uh like for me this is what a lot of designers do they'll have edges that raise up about this far uh, typically i personally like to have bunkers that go all the way up the edge because one of my one of my pet peeves when a player's play in the course is their ball gets stuck on an edge that's supposed to feed into a bunker so i would just bring it all the way up here that's how I usually like to do my bunker edges, where anything landing up here is going to bring you back down to the middle of the bunker. Now, in terms of all of this right here, you can do this on a large scale. So if I come into here, I go to my create surfaces, I have my big spline right here. I'm going to come out here, have this whole area kind of do this. Look how inconsistent this bunker is, how all over the place it is. This seems like an irreparable task to a lot of new designers. But all you gotta do, come in here, grab that flatten tool, make it really big. This is probably gonna be the elevation of my bunker, kind of up here. I'm just gonna do a basic flatten up here, and then I'm gonna start doing my foot raises. And make sure you're kind of being careful about it. And this is going to obviously kind of lower a little bit. So we're going to kind of try to keep that slope in. Here. 
And as you can see already, just with one pass of the flatten tool, this is looking like a playable bunker compared to what we had before. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time. Just keep in mind the steeper slopes you put your bunkers on, the harder this becomes. Uh, so you can't really do it on places like this, where if you have a bunker up here, this is going to be a whole lot more work for you. Uh, this is something that even intimidates me, having bunkers on big, huge slopes like this. This is a lot of time, a lot of effort to actually get this bunker to play right. Uh, in terms of everything else, let me see if there... I might have had one more thing to say about the brush tool. Uh, I think I mentioned it, but uh, when you're using a brush tool, it's going to make your bunker go deeper. So like, if I come into here, into this bunker, and I click with a brush tool... Actually, didn't do it there, but... Usually, like, this is going to go deeper than your spline. I think I might have already mentioned this. But this spline is going to sit more up, and these are going to be a lot deeper when you do brushes. So that's just, that's just another thing to keep in mind. Uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much everything that I can think of off the top of my head to mention about bunkers. If you have any questions... Uh, just drop them down in the comments, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. Other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.